Let's talk a little bit about our equations of motion for constant acceleration in one dimension. And in this particular case, we're using x. Now there's a set of equations that are used whenever we describe these type of problems. These first two equations can be derived using calculus. For those particular situations, I've got separate videos that talk about how you can prove that these are constant acceleration equations, either using integration or derivatives. But we've got some other equations that are commonly used as well. This one down here actually comes from the fact that we have an average velocity. Since the velocity is changing, it's going to depend on time, but this equation is a straight line. So if I look at the velocity as a function of time, I'm going to get some sort of straight line with some initial value of the velocity and some final value of the velocity over some particular range of time where there's zero and here's our value of t. From this particular equation, we can define the average velocity, the average, as being one half the initial value plus the final value. Since it's a straight line, the average is going to be right in the middle of that. Now we can also use our equation that the average velocity is the displacement over a range of time. Combining these two equations and recognizing that our delta t is really just t, because our other value is zero, those combined to give us this equation, one of our commonly used equations of motion for constant acceleration. We can only use this one for constant acceleration because if the acceleration was changing, you might have a graph like this. And in that case, the average isn't necessarily right in the middle. So this equation, again, can only be used if I've got constant acceleration so that my velocity line's a nice straight line. Now there's a couple other equations that are used, and whether you see all five of these or just four of these depends a little bit on the textbook you use. But these last two are really just algebraic combinations of these first three. And in this case, we can take these equations and eliminate one of the unknown variables. So in this equation, we don't have time. In this equation, we don't have the initial velocity. Each one of these is related to the others. So if we were to take these particular three equations and do some simultaneous solutions, we would get this sort of an answer. These equations then can help us solve pretty much any problem in constant acceleration in 1D motion. Each one of these has four variables in them. In total, we can look at the displacement, the initial velocity, the final velocity, the acceleration, and the time. If you have three of these variables, one of these equations will help you find the fourth one and the fifth one that you don't know. Any particular one of these equations could be used, but there's always going to be the best equation. So for example, if you've got the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the time, and you're looking for the position, this first equation is going to work really well, because you can plug in the initial velocity, the time, the acceleration, time squared, and find your delta x just in one step. But if you had the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the time, and you were looking for the final velocity, you would want to use this sort of an equation, where you've got the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the time, and you have to find the final velocity. Each one of these equations is best used in a particular situation. You'll see lots of examples of this, so just hold on and watch some more videos and work some more practice problems.